Hey, what is up everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be talking all about GitHub and really walking through some strategies to make your GitHub profile look more impressive to employers. So in this video, we'll be walking through, I don't know, five, let's go with five concrete tips. Some are quick and easy, some are a bit more involved that you can use to spice up that that GitHub profile. I've done a lot of hiring for data science programming positions, and especially in this job market, having a polished GitHub profile that's easy to follow, that stands out, really can help you separate yourself from the field. One thing that I wanna stress before we dive into this video is that when I'm reviewing resumes, GitHub profiles, I'm not as interested in your educational background, which, which certificates you have. I'm way more interested in the simple question of, can you build? And what I mean by that is, I want clear and concrete proof from your resume, from your GitHub profile, that you know how to build things with code. And that could be all sorts of things. It could be dashboards, it could be games, it could be you know streamlit applications, it could be, just simple visualizations. What I want is concrete proof that you can do those things. And so your job in tailoring your GitHub profile and tailoring your resume is to make it as easy as possible for the employer to see those things, to see that proof. On first pass, the average employer only spends seven seconds looking at a resume. So you need to make an impact as quickly as possible. All right, we're gonna start off with a super quick and easy tip. This may be relevant to you, it may not be, but one thing that I see when I look at people's profiles is if they're active or not. And if you look at my profile right now, it looks like I'm basically doing nothing as far as code goes, but there's a good reason for that, and that's because most of the work that I do happens in private repositories, but there's a quick and easy way to show that you're active and you're working on these private repositories without revealing any sensitive data. So what you can do is you can click on your profile icon in the top right corner once you're signed in, click on settings, go down to contributions and activity, and then there's this button you can toggle, include private contributions on my profile. And as you can see, this will add your activity there without revealing any repository or organization information. So perfect, we'll do that. And now if we go back to what my profile looks like, we can refresh and that looks much better. Quick and easy, tip number one. All right, tip number two is also quick and easy and that is to make usage of pins on your profile. So oftentimes I feel like you may have worked on, you know, 10 plus projects on GitHub but only have one or two that you really wanna show off. Maybe it's something recent that you're quite proud of. By default, GitHub kind of selects what repositories to show. It might be by default showing most starred to least starred, but I feel like for most individuals, it's gonna be kind of random. It's not gonna really show what you wanna show off. So you can go ahead and click on this customize your pins button on the top right, and you can be like, hey, I was quite proud of the podcast downloader repo. I'm gonna pin that. Um, you might also be like, oh, that recent video I did on the API was uh, quite good. I'm gonna pin that. So now I can save these pins. And if we look at my profile, those are what's gonna show up. So if you wanna make this impressive for an employer, the use case here is whatever you want the employer to see, pin those and you can kind of leave out the rest. So it just needs to be like one or two. Your best work, something that's well-documented, cool, etc. Like use these pins. All right, the third tip, this is probably the, I don't know, coolest, like probably most important tip. One, if not the second most important tip is to add a profile readme to your GitHub. So I first learned of this tip uh, through my brother, the one person that I follow on GitHub, uh, that he had this cool readme that was attached to his GitHub profile which you know tells me a bit about him, lets me know what he's working on. And one of the really cool things I like about his readme is that it shows open source contributions. And if I like click into one of these, I can actually see PRs from big open source projects that, that Bobby has done. So this readme that you can have, you can do whatever you want with it. Note that employers don't spend a lot of time looking at your profile. 
So if you want to stand out and catch your attention quickly, this README is a great way to do that. So how do you create one of these readbees? Well, I will put some instructions as a link in the description, but the steps we can follow look like this. We first need to create a new repository. So I'll go ahead and show that. I'm gonna go repositories, new, and we need to name this with the same name as us. And note, look, it's a special repository. That, it's kind of a fun animation. It's public add a readme file and we'll go ahead and github profile readme so the repository name if it's the same exact name as the owner's name then it creates this special repository create this repository and we see that now we have this readme here and cool it actually has a comment here already with it pre-populated yeah I'm currently working on, I'm looking to collaborate on. Yeah, so these are some good bullet points. So we can copy these and paste it in. I would say short and sweet, you probably don't even need to use all of these. I would take like three of them. Like I'm currently working on X, but even if I just preview this, like commit changes, and then we go back to my profile. We see that now that shows up along with the pins and the contribution graph. So we're getting a more and more impressive profile here, but let's actually fill this in. Okay, what can we do to make this a bit better? Let's fill in some details here. I might start it off. You wanna make this concise, easy to follow and point people to the most important things that you have on your profile in as few words as possible. So I might just do something like, uh, you know, my name is Keith. And I, I am a, an MIT trained computer scientist interested in all things Python and data science. You might use an exclamation point for emphasis there. I'm currently working on, think of things that you want people to know about. Whatever's yeah, most impressive, what's coolest, what you want people to talk about. I also recommend, depending on how frequently you expect to update this, things that kind of will be sustainable so you don't have to update this every week if you're learning about some new topic each week. So I'm currently working on a new startup called Hello Creator. So I might want to mention that. And I, we are building, building an AI powered companion for social media creators. And maybe I would go ahead and link our website because I want people to click on that. You know, you don't have to follow like, the exact prompts they used. Maybe this is like, instead of this emoji, uh, I need to find a new emoji, but uh, we'll, we'll worry about the emojis after. Maybe it's something like, I recently built a program to automatically download and transcribe your favorite podcasts. Check it out here. So this is specifically referencing some code that I think is cool that maybe would impress a potential employer. Fill in the link here. I'm using the hyperlinking format. Check it out here. And then I'm looking to collaborate on YouTube videos. How about that? You know, pitch my YouTube channel. And they probably would see my YouTube links elsewhere on my profile. And maybe I, I would actually, you know, pass an address, like an email or two, something like send me ideas to business at keithgalley.com. Let's see what that looks like. Decent, I probably could honestly make it better. Maybe I honestly uh, indent this uh, to be a nested bullet. I don't actually really know how nested bullets work. And there we go, that worked. And it you know adds a bit to my profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure these links work. And now if we go back to the profile, so now we have a, this little readme here too. And something that I wanna call out here with this readme, you wanna make it short and sweet. You wanna to try to make it visually appealing, and I probably could improve upon this a bit, maybe use different emojis or just spread things out a bit more. And you want to help guide users to other spots on your GitHub profile or just other spots, you know, projects you're involved in. 
So one of the things I really, really want to call out here is like you can link to a specific project. And I definitely recommend if you have like a streamlit application, you know, a game, something that's interactive that employers can see, use this space to link it. So like this um, download and transcribe your favorite podcast example is one thing. And part of the reason I like using this link is like I show a visual of like how this program operates, which I think is pretty cool. And like something visual that they can either play around with or see, I think is quite important to link. Some other ideas, as I mentioned, the Streamlit dashboard would be one. Another thing I was thinking about linking was um, the recent API, like interactive API that, that we created in another video. So it, you know, it has these different endpoints. You can actually play around with the endpoints. Honestly, probably the reason I didn't share this immediately is because I deleted the API key that allows you to actually test these things. So if you are to share something like this that is interactive, try to go the full extent, let people fully play around with things because that will prove that, hey, this person knows how to code, they can set up an API. And then maybe also like if you were to share these docs, also share the corresponding code with that. Uh, if you're curious in building this API, I will put a link to the other video that video series that was recently shared on my channel. Tip number four is a pretty simple one, but I think sometimes overlooked. And that is just make sure to actually fill in all the details on your profile. So this readme is one thing, uh, but have a profile picture and make sure it's a like clear profile picture. Try to make it as centered as possible, not pixelated. I would say that it's fine to be like somewhat casual in your picture. Uh, typically software development industry is pretty casual, so don't worry about being overly formal. It doesn't have to be the same picture as maybe your LinkedIn profile, but a nice clear profile picture. You can edit this very easily by going to edit profile, edit, and then upload a photo. You know, use your bio if you want to, maybe a public email. And then for me or others, if you, let's say you have a website or something that you want people to be able to access, you know, use your GitHub to, to showcase this. So maybe I wanted to show my personal website. Uh, maybe I wanted to show off our company's GitHub, but nothing's public right now. So I'm not going to do that. Just fill in these details. And I would say there are some cases, maybe you don't want to actually have your profile picture, but have some sort of nice clear image here. I just, the, the things to avoid is having no image or just pixelated image. So simple tip, tip number four, just fill in your profile details, fill in links if they make sense too. And I'm just tweaking this around a little bit because I didn't like the order of that. I'm gonna do personal website up top. Let's see how this looks. I might be able to just get away with doing keithgalley.com, but I don't know, this is probably fine. This looks pretty good. People can go to my Twitter profile. People can go, I might put my LinkedIn here too. YouTube, so, cool, that works. I'll also put my LinkedIn, why not? Cool, look at that. Looks nice. And yeah, whatever's most important, whatever's relevant to actually being an engineer, I would say. So don't link your Twitter if you just post random NBA mixtapes or something. Maybe that's cool, I don't know. <laughs> you do you. All right. Tip number five, within your repositories, make sure to have good readmes. So if you're going to pin a repo here, don't let it just be like an empty repo with nothing there. So I probably can go to one of my most old games or something like that. Uh, yeah, like this is, there's nothing here. I would really recommend like showing a bit more than just like this. like. Try to, if you have an image there, use an image. If there's just something that can stand out, um, do that in your readme. And so how, to kind of encapsulate this, I would say you wanna cover the what, you wanna cover the how, and you wanna cover the why. So the what, you know, makes it stick out right away. So let's go to this example that I linked in the profile, the podcast downloader. So the what, is right here. And to make the what even more clear, we used a GIF here that shows this program in action. It's really clearly demonstrating the what. And there's a nice little 
catchphrase right here. So that's the what. Okay, next is the, the how. So here in the code, so let's say the employer is impressed by this, they're like, oh, I would love to try this out. The how is the setup. How do you actually get this running? And here is, you know, instructions that are pretty detailed, etc. Some images, use images as much as you can. I always love images. Cool, so very helpful stuff. And then the, the why here, very much is covered in this first statement too. So the order is not always the what, how, why. Uh, oftentimes I would say the what and why is the start and then the how is down below in the setup or something. So the why, you can search through podcasts instead of having to you know, just guess that you might like an episode. You can search through podcasts and find specific episodes that mention specific topics. So that's the why. So add to your readme is based on this what and why and how format. And just a good, I guess, piece of advice here. You might wonder how can you actually embed like a GIF or something like this here? I don't know if you can embed videos, but the way that this was done, and let me know in the comments if you have any issues um, leveraging this, but using this kind of a image embed syntax within Markdown. So really, this, is, this path is what's most important. This is just actually a description, I believe, for web search and also for people that have, can't see, for visually impaired individuals. But there's the syntax that you can use, and you can always go into one of these repos and check out what the readme actually looks like. And then where we actually, what I typically do is I might make a resources folder within the project. And here we see that we have the code sample PNG and the podcast downloader GIF. And in the readme, we can actually reference these things. Cool, so that final tip, fill in your readmes, make them pop. Don't just have text, try to make a image if you can. And if you're going to pin something, make sure that you have these readmes filled out because if you pin something and there's no, details there. Maybe it's the most impressive code in the world, but I get overwhelmed if I just see hundreds of code files with no context on how I need to navigate them. All right, I think that's all we have. So to recap, the five tips were one simple thing, but turn on anonymous private contributions to spice up how much you're showing on GitHub. Two, pin top repositories that you want an employer to see. Three, add the readme to your profile. Four, simple thing, but make sure you have a nice, clear profile image, not pixelated, and fill in those social links if they make sense to. Just fill in the full profile. And then five, on the repos that you decide to pin, you decide to highlight, make sure that the readmes within those repositories are filled out. Try to add images or GIFs if you can to really make it stand out quickly to a potential employer. All right, I think that that's all we have. If you found these tips useful, make sure to throw this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am working on a bunch of new tutorials that are just taking a little while, so new content coming soon. Have a fun program, programming or solving real world data science problems using LLMs uh, video that I'm hopefully sharing soon, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below in the comments section. But I think that's all I have. So until next time, everyone, peace out.